words as an identity. For example, if you tell me queer to insult me, no, I do, you cannot abuse me with this word, I am queer. If you say her to me, I accept this uh, pejorative definition you said to me as an identity. I am a whore, this is my body, I can sell it, I can use it as I want. And after that moment, we see uh, some, kind, uh, some kind of uh, literature. Uh, actually, there used to uh, many examples about queer uh, representations in history, in art, and in literature, of course, but uh, the, the queer literature is a um, kind of new definition for a special literature or art genre. This one is Zephyrus and Iacintus. Uh, it is a Greek sketch, Greek artwork. Uh, this one is uh, burned to homosexuals in Iran, if I'm not mistaken. And this one is a ceremony of the uh, true spirit person. A uh, two-spirit person is, uh, there was used to uh, a third gender in, ancient, in some ancient uh, groups. Uh, men, women and two gender. Uh, two gender is not, I mean, uh, this is a related to God and Goddess belief. Uh, men have a God's soul in their body and women have Goddess's soul in their body, but two Two, gen two spirit spirit people uh, have God and Goddess's soul in their body at the same time. So they celebrate these um, people and they were holy for these groups. This one is uh, from China. Uh, as you can see, there are two men making love, and there is a woman. Spine them. Uh, we see as, uh, these bold examples, especially in uh, Persia, China, and Ottoman, uh, in Greek or in other cultures, Af Africa, and uh, some Asian Asian countries. Uh, there are, of course, there are some queer representations, but uh, the most bold examples are um, common in especially Ottoman. As you can see, there is a man uh, who had an anal sex with a wine boy. Okay. Now, queer literature. Uh, actually, we see, as you can see, there are uh, some representations, many representations in uh, history, as, a, as we can say queer in some way. Uh, but as, as I said before, uh, queer literature, queer art, queer cinema, queer uh, paintings are new for our intellectual areas. Uh, because the until the third wave, I mean the movement that I mentioned before, um, there wasn't an acceptance of these identities as a normal. And, for example, uh, in Virginia Woolf's Orlando, there is a bisexual representation, but uh, we didn't, uh, critics didn't uh, said that this is a bisexual novel or uh, this is a queer literature. But now we say, because we accept this bisexuality or being uh, in love with men and women at the same time uh, as an identity now. So uh, we use this uh, term queer literature or queer art uh, newly. So uh, there are some examples. Uh, for example, there was a, a novella 
named Carmilla, is a, uh, about a lesbian vampire. And Oscar Wilde's novels and other books uh, may count as uh, gay novels uh, and gay uh, literature because of the other, uh, not their content actually. Uh, in Dorian Gray's portraits, uh, some people think that there is a um, quite gay features, but I'm not sure. So, uh, as in, uh, we call these books uh, of Oscar Wilde's gay arts because of the other. And in the next sense, by bisexual. Uh, genre uh, we use I said uh, Orlando and we also say may say um, call me by your name the novel written 2016 and there is a transsexual genre also in queer literature uh, Meredith Rousseau's If I Was Your Girl and the Seven Game Sons The Art of Being Normal. We can see these examples under the queer literature. Now, of course, in queer literature, we see uh, Homerot and some extra people uh, commonly. For example, horrors, um, drug addicts. Uh, murderers or some perverts, especially in old books. Uh, but there is a uh, some kind of representation of love actually. And especially after the this movement in third feminism, third wave feminism, uh, we see more common uh, more normal Love examples in queer literature uh, because you know uh, it was a crime in some countries and it was a normal for some countries for some people so uh, they exaggerated the relationship between uh, same sexes and uh, trans transgenders or these type of People not, not because of their uh, gender identity or gender gender orientation, orientation but uh, their extra features uh, because of their extra features uh, they anonymized in especially in old books. But thanks to this movement, thanks to this uh, sociological movement, uh, we now see more soft and more romantic, more um, again normal uh, relationships between same-sex people or transgender people or a gender people in these novels in art in literature so <laughs> there is a love between some people or one people and something else because erotism is not always related to people Sometimes you can have feelings, erotic feelings, on a sculpture or maybe a portrait or object. And this isn't always have to be a sexual thing. It could be romantic. It could be sensualized feeling that you cannot easily describe. And that's why I choose two examples for my representation. Uh, one of them is about Rumi. Uh, Anne-Marie Chimel, uh, it's, she is a very good uh, academic who doing research on uh, Rumi and it's his poetry. And she said, Shams Tabrizi, who transformed Rumi into a poet. After Shams' death, uh, Rumi searched him 
for two years. And he started to write some letters, some poetic letters to him. And he started to he started to lose his mind in some in some extent. We are romanticizing in this in a religious way, but uh, in here we see pure Sufi love and pure love in Sufi understanding, <coughs> because uh, in Sufism in Sufi philosophy. Uh, you have to love someone to reach the love of God. And for Rumi, Shams was uh, humanized form of pure love of God. And after his death, he started to uh, lose his mind, as I said. And the Dance that we call Sema uh, came up. Uh, in some stories about Rumi, uh, someone, uh, some people say that uh, when people uh, drinking tea and she can understand he started to turn around and uh, he started to. He starts to dance when he hears any song, any mm, rhythmic sound. And also I have another quotation. Rumi found the physical manifestation of the divine beloved in the human form of the Sufi Darvish Shams Tabriz. Uh, and we have some poems uh, about the, that written by Rumi about Shams. Come, how much for a kiss from those precious rubies? If a kiss costs a life, it still must be bought. Since that kiss is pure, it is not sweet for dust. Uh, as in here, uh, they lived in the same room uh, for two years also. And some people uh, <coughs> claim that they have no sexual relationship, but uh, regarding to my sources, which I will give you later. Uh, I think they have a sexualized relationship, erotic relationship, but we uh, didn't understand these from these poems before the queer literature, queer movement of in uh, third wave feminism, because uh, you can say that uh, yes, it's a case of pure religious. Emotions which Rumi has to his God, uh, but uh, as you can see, friends lips, how marvelous, beloved. Undoubtedly, these are for written for Shams. And here, that law has transformed every one of my hairs into a verse and a gazelle. The ecstasy has made every part of me a wet of honey. Last night, the friend kissed me on the lips. Otherwise, why should my words be so full of savor? <sighs> Again, Rumi mm, define a kiss, define a homoerotic action between he and his friend. And as Rana said, uh, the important feature the, on the changing uh, that we uh, changing of our understanding is uh, pre-understanding, the term pre-understanding. After this uh, social movement, we can um, dig into the meaning in these poet poems, and we can see the homerotism behind them, behind them. And the second person, Nedim, uh, I've used this poem uh, in Ottoman Turkish with Latin <laughs> alphabet, uh, because I have to explain some things on between Turkish and English. Uh, Nedim is more sexual person than Rumi. He's not uh, naive as Rumi, 
but he's he likes drinking wine. He likes uh, drinking, uh, having sex. He likes uh, having fun, and he also called Zechaide. I think I don't remember where that now. Uh, okay, now I don't read all of them, uh, but I will read some parts of it. Gidelim Sergilavan'ın yürü Sadabat. Sadabat is a very common um, center of having fun in Istanbul, in that uh, era. And Sergilavan is a long person. It defines a long person. My testim içelim, çeşme gelin peygamber. Now, my testim and Aldo Hayat uh, represents sperm in this poem. Çeşme gelin peygamber. Newly growing male penis, actually. Uh, and Aldo Hayat taktığı Ejderha'dan. Ejderha is a grown man's penis. Uh, in first two part, uh, he called his lover to go having fun and uh, having sex. And in four part, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> In that era, the women do not go for praying in Fridays. And of course, there is a one more thing. Someone who has a very beautiful voice. And we understand that this young boy has a very beautiful voice. Uh, he is woman-like and he is a long boy. Also, the term, uh, the word Hraman uh, is represents some people uh, walking. It's called Hraman. Uh, Hraman it, means it's, uh, walking with law or in an erotic way. But its root is same with the Haram, which uh, Word called uh, from Arabic, and the thing between this young bo young boy and Nadim is uh, might be count as haram or uh, abandoned from government by government and by his god. So he uh, defines this law with these terms actually also uh, one of, one more uh, poem of Nedim kız olan kızınızın şehlevent avazı avazı belasın ben de bilmem kızınızın oğlan mısın kafir in that poem also he refers a boy uh, who is a woman like boy and as you can see there is a more sexualized way of uh, homerotism, but in Rumi we see more naive uh, form of this homerotism. And we can describe these uh, poems in queer way or in homerotic way thanks to our changing parameters standing because of the somehow a sociological movement that calls queer movement or feminist movement. And my resources for further readings if you wanna you can 